<clears throat> Good afternoon, Fargo, Fargo City Commissioner Tony Gehrig with your How I Voted for the November 2nd and November 16th Fargo City Commission meeting. I'm combining them because there's only a couple of things I want to talk to you about with these. The first thing was the Anderson Park TIF. So Anderson Park, most of you know where that is, south of the interstate, 45th. Um, large area, there's a developer that wants to come in and build apartment complexes, build a uh, parking ramp that might help the zoo or the hockey arena that's around there, uh, build a park in the middle of that large complex. Uh, if you've just seen the lights and, and, and places like that, it's kind of the same concept, not exactly the same, but you know, kind of the same programming where they want to do more than just build a big apartment building on, on that prime real estate. Um, it was it ended up being a three to two vote to deny the TIF, uh, which is fantastic in my opinion. Uh, it's, it's it's showing that the commissioners are being more prudent with what types of money, or how much money, or when they spend that money on these apartment complexes. It's a great step in the right direction. Here's why I voted. I won't speak for them. I will speak for myself about why I voted against it. Number one, it's not blighted area. It is prime real estate. That is some of the most valuable land that you can find in Fargo, and therefore North Dakota, without oil underneath it. That is a perfect spot to, to have a huge development that's going to make you lots and lots of money if you are so lucky to be able to be in that position. Um, there's no but for question. They're going to build something. They're going to build something there. They have already bought the property. Uh, they're at, When asked at the meeting if they would do it, but what they said was, yeah, we're going to do something there. I asked them the direct question, will you build without the incentive? Yeah, we'll build something, but if we can either build something really nice or something really, really nice. <laughs> That's right. Well, of course, you can either buy, if, you, if you have a money you're going to buy a new car, you can buy a nice new car, but if the taxpayers give you an extra fifty thousand dollars, you can buy something really, really nice. You know, well, of course that's the case. You do the same with your house or anything else. If you get money from outside entities, you you can buy something really nice. Yeah, that's the way. That's that's how money works. Um, but why why are we on the hook for that? Why would you help buy me a car? Why would I help pay for your house? It's your house. You pay for it. And if it's your business and you want to build a, an apartment complex with a bunch of really nice stuff there, then build it. But don't ask me for money for it. As well, I don't. I don't blame them for asking. I blame us for giving it away. But in this scenario, we didn't, which is a great step in the right direction. I'm very happy that's what happened. But it was a good discussion had by all, uh, and it ended up being a three to two vote to deny John Strand and Arlette Preston, to their credit, voted no with me. Um, this was the first meeting, the November 16th meeting, that I that I moved to uh, end the emergency mandate. You know, a lot of people have a lot of opinions on this. The reason I voted to end it was because we need to get back to regular government. We need to get back to a point where commissioners bring up a subject, we debate that subject, and we vote on that subject. And at this point in history, we were not doing that. Uh, a flood emergency is different than a health emergency, uh, than is different than a natural disaster, I mean, whatever. There's different types of emergencies. And it, right now in the city of Fargo, we're treating all of them the exact same. And we're saying, well, we have one type of emergency uh, 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 ordinance here. We, if we declare an emergency, the mayor gets all the powers. He can have it for as long as he wants, or as long until he gives it up, or until the city commission votes to take it away from him. But that's funny, because as a city commission, he's one of the city commissioners. He can vote to keep his power in himself. So you automatically need three people, in my opinion, that aren't him, to vote against it. You basically need a supermajority in order to remove those powers. Um, so the reason that I want to end it is because we are not in regular order. As a commissioner, I'm a bystander. The mayor can, can make these decisions unilaterally as though he's the king, and that's not what people voted for. That's not that's not how our democracy, that's not how our republic works. You have representatives that you have voted in at large in the city of Fargo. Those representatives uh, argue, debate, vote, and they're held accountable for how they vote, and that's how it should work. I understand the need for an uh, emergency mandate, uh, it, during a flood event uh, or something like that. But a, a 10, 12 month uh, uh, emergency mandate is dangerous for our, for our democracy. Um, and it's not how we should be, how we should be uh, conducting our business. And it's time for us to end that. Um, and we've had those debates uh, since then uh, as well. Um, and it, it, it remains in place. Now to credit of Tim Mahoney, he's, he's been asking more and more about uh, for us to vote on these certain things. The biggest reason they gave for us to have the emergency mandate was for federal funding to come into the city of Fargo. We have received somewhere around $52 million from states, from the state and from the federal government because of the, of the pandemic. The fear, the conjecture was that we would, we would lose those dollars if we lost the emergency mandate. That is 100% not true. Uh, after looking into it and having our city administrator dig into it, uh, we would have lost $16,000 of the $52 million. 
$16,000 we would have lost if we weren't in the emergency mandate. And that's, that's not even necessarily true. We don't even know that to, to be the fact, but that's, if, if worst case scenario, we lost $16,000. That's telling me there's actually no reason to be under an emergency mandate, an emergency declaration, and have our government not operate the way that's supposed to operate. That is not saying to anybody, that is not saying that COVID is not important, that COVID is not dangerous, and it's not affecting the people in our community. What I'm telling you is, is that if we aren't under emergency mandate, we will operate the same as we are now, only we'll have five commissioners running the city and not one running at Bay King. So the emergency mandate still remains to, uh, to, to this day, uh, the 14th of January of 2021, uh, but we're going to keep bringing it up and we're going to get rid of it as soon as possible. And hopefully the state does the same thing. Hopefully the state ends the emergency mandate that they have uh, so that we get back to regular order where the legislature makes laws, not, not the executive, that's not a law, um, and that we can get back to regular order in, in government. If you have questions about this or any other, of the other videos, give me a call, text, email, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Parler, maybe not anymore, um, and keep watching while we're spending your tax dollars. Thank you.